Corn down. All right, so tonight we're we're going to be talking about how to feed muscle and burn fat, and that's how you're going to get the body that you've always wanted. Um, so when we do that, um, you got to address both nutrition and exercise. But uh, sometimes people think it's just all about you know it's all about doing a bunch of cardio or over exercising, but it's going to be mostly about nutrition. So really, the purpose of tonight's webinar is to really um, you know, hopefully hold up some hard truths of things you may have been doing that maybe or also um, things that maybe that you didn't want to believe that you've heard now for the next time and now you finally you're finally going to believe it because you've heard it from multiple sources, including myself. Um, provide solutions and hope as well uh, because we want you to be able to have hope after this four weeks that maybe you've tried a lot of things in the past, different diets, different exercise plans, and they haven't worked. And we wanted to approach this from, you know, getting your, your hormonal environment in place. And that's where a lot of times we just focus on calories, you know, how many calories you burn, how many calories you cut. And we want to give you solutions that are real and start your breakthrough here in the next four weeks. Um, what's the problem we see today in our, in our culture? Um, what are we taught? You know, I, I talk about cardio. Women are taught to do cardio. That's the way that it's so ingrained in them. It's, 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 uh, it's crazy that how many... When, when they think about losing weight, they start running, they start getting on the elliptical, they start doing tons and tons of cardio. And this guy named Davis took a thousand women, he did aerobics only for a year and asked if they, you know, how many of them at the end of the year reached their fitness goals. And at the end of that year, uh, out of those thousand women, I'm doing tons of cardio, aerobics only exercise, no strength training, not really watching what they eat. Zero out of a thousand people met that goal. So we've been lied to. We've been lied to by the health club industry who basically rents cardio machines. We've been lied to by the uh, home exercise equipment people that, that basically rent you a nice expensive clothes hanger, and cardio is really part of the part of the, the solution. But it's not. It's on my in my opinion, from my experience doing fitness for over 20 years, it's only it's number three in the ranking. And if we have more health clubs than ever, more cardio machines out there than ever, why are we getting heavier as a nation? Um, right now, we're a third of our population is considered obese, and that's you know we look at body composition which is when you guys do your assessments for this beauty body makeover, you will get done as our, our gold standard for determining what's obesity. Because somebody could have a big frame and a lot of muscle, and they might weigh more, but it's just muscle versus body fat, and that's what we want to look at. You know, men, we want to be under 25%. Um, ideally, about 15 to 20%. Women, we want to be about 20 25% in a healthy range. Anything under 20 for women is going to be considered athletic. Um, so these are the things we want to look at. You know, and the scary thing is, is that those of us that have kids, um, we're starting to see type 2 diabetes in our children, and this could be the generation that doesn't always outlive their parents. So this is more than just you getting healthier. We want to teach you things that you can help your family with, too, so your kids don't have problems down the road. And even your spouse, if you have a spouse that you're trying to get going, um, you know, this, this information is important for them, too. So, um, you know, we got a real problem in this country, and, you know, the things we've been doing in the past haven't been working, so we want to start speaking truth. What else do we see if we look? If we look at TV, um, we see the biggest loser. We see uh, what do we t we see on the biggest loser is see people getting the crap beat out of them. Basically, pain, soreness, puking. That's how you have to lose weight, and that's not the best way to go about it. That actually can be counterproductive. And you know, most of those people from the biggest loser typically gain the weight back um, after they get out of the camp. You know, they're in the camp or the ranch or whatever you want to call it. They're basically working out all day. They're getting all their meals prepared for them. I mean, that's not real life. Um, I always call it on reality TV. Uh, and the, a lot of things they do on there, the trainers even admit, aren't safe things to be doing. They do it for ratings. But people believe in that, you know, and they believe that that's the way they got to do it. And uh, that, that, that's one extreme. Then we go to the other extreme where people want to do the magic bullet. I still hear commercials on the radio that espouse, you know, the magic bullet approach. I, you know, one of them was Senso, which is something you just sprinkled on your food, and that was what you could do, and they would say, you don't have to diet or exercise, you don't have to watch you eat or exercise, which is a big fat lie, or some magic pill, or, or Dr. Oz has come under a lot of heat lately because he's been talking about these magic herbs and magic supplements, and he had to actually go up in front of Congress, so there, there is nothing to substitute good hard work and effort over time, and the weight that came on overnight isn't going to go off overnight. If it does, you know, like a lot of these things you'll see on TV or around the side of the road, lose 40 pounds in 30 days and these crazy things. Uh, it's probably going to be a lot of muscle. We're going to address that a little bit down the road. The actual goals you want to be looking at is muscle hypertrophy, meaning that muscle uh, is metabolic. We want to add muscle. And muscle, you're not going to bulk up. Women have about a quarter of the amount of male hormone. 
system than men do, so it's a lot harder for them to to add muscle. And by adding muscle, what you do is increase your metabolism. So every pound of muscle is going to probably add about 20 to 50 calories to your metabolism. And so we want to add muscle and we want to lose fat. We don't want to lose weight. We want to lose fat. Make sure that we're actually losing the right kind of weight. And we've had people in our studio lose not very much weight, but they lose a lot of inches and they look totally different because they're losing fat and they're gaining muscle. So sometimes the scale doesn't reflect that. And they'll say, well, I'm not losing any weight, even though my clothes are fitting better. I've dropped the clothing size and I can see definition. Well, so we got to look at body composition again. So that's the real goal. Uh, joint mobility and moving better. Why is that important to fat loss? We've got to be doing flexibility and mobility because we're in, most of us work in bad postural situations. I'd say most people work in a sitting in front of a computer, they sit in a car, and that creates imbalances in the body. When your body's imbalanced, uh, your body's not going to be moving well, which is going to create inflammation. Inflammation creates a hormone called cortisol, a stress hormone. And hormones, uh, when you have a uh, stress hormone like cortisol that's in high amount in your body, when, it's, when you have excess of cortisol, it's really hard to burn fat and, and add lean muscle. So we want to make sure we're moving good too, especially if we have that sitting job which doesn't allow us. And now maybe if you're a yoga teacher or, or a personal trainer like we are, you get, you're, not on, you're on your feet, you have good posture, but most people, we're talking about the mass, the majority of people, so that should be part of that because we want to control cortisol and inflammation in the body uh, so that hormonally your body's going to be primed to burn fat. Why do most programs fail? Um, I see this a lot is not knowing where to begin. Uh, you know, most people just kind of jump. They do a, they'll do a haphazard approach. We see this at the beginning of the year. This is classic when, you know, they'll plan their, their family vacation down to the last detail, but when it comes to losing weight and getting healthy, it's a haphazard approach. Jump on a treadmill, jump on an elliptical, join a health club, no real plan. And that kind of goes with number three, not having a plan, and fail to plan, plan to fail. So a lot of times they just do cardio, and we, we saw earlier they did the 1,000 women that did cardio for a year, zero of them hit the goal. And just kind of, it's kind of like going to California without using a GPS or a, uh, you know, MapQuest or whatever from here, just kind of driving and hoping to find your destination. And a lot of times it's an incomplete program. It's, it's very cardio-based. Or on the flip side, some people just try to diet without exercise. And you really need a, a multifaceted attack. Number two kind of address is, is one big one, too, is people kind of play that game of so many calories, I can eat this. And, you know, calories in, calories out just doesn't cut it anymore. For those of you, anybody that knows about what's going on with nutrition, and so it doesn't work that way. There's hormonal implications of eating the wrong things that can cause you to store body fat even if your calories are low. And a lot of people we frankly find don't eat enough. That's one of the problems. Their metabolism is slowed down because they're not eating enough and they've kind of in a way sabotaged their metabolism and they're still 50 pounds overweight. So you can't outwork a bad diet. Abs are made in the kitchen, not the gym. That's, that's, there's some sayings out there and I totally agree because nutrition is something that's a day, it's, it's something you got to focus on throughout the day. Working out, exercise, probably going to do it once a day and you're done thinking about it but you got to be focusing on nutrition 70% of the time, that means you got to be doing things to um, to make that you know to make that nutrition successful. That means you're going to have to put a little extra time into this piece, um, you know, prepping meals, shopping, and most people won't you know aren't doing that. They're kind of in a reactive mode where they're running from kids activity to kids activity or from work and you know swinging through a drive through grabbing something quick and easy. And um, you know it's crazy. I was just in Costco tonight before the seminar, getting some food, getting some good food for the house, and there's people in there. After they're done shopping, what do they do? They stop and they get a pizza or a hot dog, and it's like, go home and eat your good food. And, you know, it does take some discipline and some work to do the nutrition right, and that's where, but like I said, that's 70% of your results. You want to put a lot of effort, and that's a lot of it's mental effort and, and putting time aside to make this part work, and this is where you're going to see the biggest gain, uh, biggest return on your investment. Um, you know, number four, we kind of just touched on that earlier, dieters mentality, quick fix. Once again, I'm going to repeat that. Weight that comes on overnight, weight that comes on over years isn't going to go away overnight. There isn't a magic bullet. You want to lose it. You want to lose it steadily. You don't want to lose it too fast, or you're going to lose muscle. Um, number five is lack of profession, professional guidance or no accountability. You know, most of us have people in our lives that do things for us. You know, I know I have a guy who does my taxes. I have a business coach. I have somebody who invests my my retirement funds. People that know and study the things I don't have time to learn or don't want to learn, and I just need hair hand and this over to you. You figure this out. Um, show me how I need to get there as quick as possible. And also for accountability's sake, you know, most of us are good at certain things and other things we're not good at. You've got to be accountable. When the things that we struggle with that we're not naturally good at, we need to find somebody, a coach or a buddy or something that is going to hold us accountable so we can move forward. And I just mentioned I have a business coach. You know, running a personal training business is a whole different skill set than being a personal trainer. So 
Um, I have a business coach to keep me accountable, keep me focused on what's important, and that's the same thing with a fitness person like myself or my staff. That's what we're, that's probably the number one reason people come in and say they hire us. And then no purpose or goal. You know, why are you doing this thing? You know, you got to define that. And everybody got that. They're their, their beauty body makeover guy. When you go with your training, you got to go back to that why. What's the purpose that you want to want to get healthier? And you got to go deeper than I'm going to lose a few dress sizes and I want to feel better about myself. You know, what are you? What's holding you back by not being in shape? You know, what are things that you're missing out on, or you know, what things are you? Or what areas of your life is it affecting? You know, is it that you don't have any energy to play with your kids? Um, maybe you want to go, you have a trip coming up, and I talked to one participant today, and they said they had a trip coming up, and they wanted to be in shape for this, this mission trip coming up, and it was good to have a deadline, and um, it was a good start to have that going, and she was obviously very fired up about it, and uh, it's got to be something that fires you up, you know, something that gets you emotional, because there's going to be days you want to hit the snooze button on the clock and not get out of bed and go exercise. There's also going to be those days where you're going to want to eat that, that big, juicy-looking dessert or whatever. And you probably shouldn't because you just had a, you know, you had a, a big meal like a couple of days ago and you probably should skip it this night. But what's going to make you resist that? And the only thing that's going to do that is not going to be one of my trainers standing over your shoulder giving you the evil eye. It's going to be your purpose or goal that's going to hold you strong. You want to get a complete program. And that's what we really talk about in, you know, this next four weeks. We want to really kind of dial that in is nutrition. Uh, like I said, the foundation of all health and fitness, 78% of your results. Supplementation, I still get kicked back on this. Um, most people think they can still get it from their food. And I'm just going to give you a quick example. Is In order to get enough of vitamin E, which is about 400 to 800 international units, that's the optimal dosage of vitamin E, which is a big antioxidant. It really helps the cardiovascular system. In order to get that from food alone, you'd have to do about 33 pounds of spinach or 2.2 pounds of almonds. Yes, you can get it from food, but it's just not very practical. So um, you want to get some of your vitamins and minerals and things like that from your food, but then fill in the gaps with some good supplementation. We're not talking about any of the Dr. Oz magic supplements. We're talking about a good multivitamin, multimineral, omega-3s, and I would even venture to say a probiotic to help with your digestive health. Uh, number three, we want, to, uh, we want to deal with resistance training, increase that lean muscle. Remember I said the lean muscle is going to be 20 to 50 calories, and it's, you can do it in such a way that's going to rev up your metabolism. And then that's that's going to be more efficient than doing the old, if anybody remembers back to the days of like the, the machines in the health club where you do three sets of 10 on everything and you rest one minute, very generic, very vanilla, very boring. And so doing circuit tech training and doing things that get your heart rate up and challenge your muscle mass is going to help you increase your metabolism by adding muscle and we can, we're going to create the, uh, an afterburn effect. Same thing with cardiovascular exercise. If your number one priority is, is fat loss, you want to be doing shorter, higher intensity bursts of cardio. Meaning, if you know if you're in really good shape, that's getting on the treadmill, doing a jog, followed by a sprint, jog, sprint, jog, sprint, doing some intervals like that. Maybe if you're not and you're just getting going, you can also do this on elliptical. You get on elliptical, and maybe go at level three for two minutes, and kick it up to level six for a minute, go back to level three. You can also do things like you know, let's say you're on an exercise bike, you go get on an exercise bike, and you pedal for two minutes, jump off, do some jumping jacks or some plyometrics, kettlebell swings hard for a minute, get that heart rate up, get to your huff and puff and jump back on. What that does is it actually sets up a hormonal environment to help you burn fat much more efficiently than doing the long distance ones. Now, if you're training for a running race, great. You have your long runs and things like that. you got to look at what's important. If your number one goal is fat loss, you want to do short, high-intensity bouts of cardio cause it's because you're going to burn more calories after the workout and you're going to create the hormonal environment that's optimal for burning fat. Uh, number five is, is just having a coach help you get through no knowledge, support, and accountability, and progressions. You know, how often do we do a program, we do the same thing over and over again. Our body's very, very smart. So the job of a coach is to make sure your body doesn't plateau, keep you progressing along, and also to support you and help you break through obstacles. You know, because there will, there will be obstacles in any, in any big goal that you have in life. And that's what a good coach will do is help you look at, you know, the obstacles and how you can get around them instead of, you know, getting frustrated and quitting, which is where a lot of people do when they try to do it on their own. So we want to kill some sacred calls, fat burning cardio, the fat burning cardio, the long, slow distance won't get it done. It's not just calories in, calories out. Weight gain that happened over years won't go away in a few months, and the scale is not the best list and assess. And I'll just give you a quick quick uh, synopsis. I was on the scale, like last year, I did a bodybuilding show, and I was at 195, very, very lean. And after that thing was over, I went out and had a, a meal at a Mexican restaurant. And the next morning, my wife made me pancakes. So, you know, I had a couple cheat meals right after that. In a matter of less than 24 hours, I went from 195 to 207. Did I gain 12 pounds of fat? No. I gained water weight. And especially with women, you know, with hormonal 
changes that, that throughout the in the month. That's going to add water weight. If you eat some, if you eat out and you have a little extra sodium, uh, things like that can add weight and it can trick you. You're not gaining fat, but the scale is going to trick you. And you don't want to use a scale. You want to look at how your clothes fit. And you want to use the body comp as your mat, as your best litmus test. So don't get don't get stuck on the scale. I know that's a hard one to a lot of people overcome, but we don't want to become skinny fat. And we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. So. Let's just talk about conventional diets real quick, what the problem is we see. A lot of people just focus on weight loss. I mean, there's places you pay, pay, play by the pay by the pound. There, I got it. And they just focus on weight loss. They don't really tell you about what kind of weight you're losing. And um, we want to make sure we're losing the right kind of weight so it's permanent weight loss. And a lot of times if, it isn't, if, it's, if it's a lot of muscle, a lot of fat, that's what's going to set up the yo-yo effect. So when I was in college, we learned 3,500 calories was to gain or lose a pound of fat. So if I cut 500 calories in a combination of exercising more and eating less per day. Over seven days, if I kept that up, that would be 3,500 calories over a week. That would be a pound of fat. Um, you know, on the flip side, if I ate an extra 500 calories a day, if I'm trying to gain weight, like I was a football player, that would be gaining a pound uh, at the end of the week. So um, that's what we were taught. It was all about the numbers. But in theory, if I'm 200 pounds and I want to reduce my calories by 1,000 calories per day, that would be two pounds a week. By the end of the first year, I would be I would be at 104 pounds less. I would be at 96. It was just about the numbers. Not saying calories aren't important, but this just shows you how there's a little bit of a, uh, a contradiction here when you look when you actually do the math. You know, by the end of the second, you'd be negative eight pounds, I believe. So it's, it's, it's it doesn't work real well. Um, so you know, a lot of conventional diets are going to are going to help you are going to start. Are you going to lose weight? If you're going to lose muscle, because you're basically putting your body in starvation mode. And when you go into starvation mode, your body's going to start getting rid of the tissue that costs the calories. And remember, at the beginning of this webinar, I talked about what is that tissue. It's muscle tissue. And it's going to store fat because fat is stored energy because that's, that's kind of its insurance policy. That's energy stores in case of an emergency. But it'll actually slow things down um, because muscle costs it energy, so it wants to conserve energy. So when you're starving, your body's starving, it doesn't want to burn more energy. It wants to slow everything down so you can conserve energy and go into, into a survival mode. And a lot of conventional diets do this. They create that that you know starve off the muscle and just keep the fat. And they don't. A lot of them don't include exercise. Just go to the weight loss center, check in, weigh in, and you know then they weigh in and they don't really care about what kind of weight you're losing. So let's just take an example. Let's say Joe, uh, Joe or Jane Dieter. In this case, because we're doing beauty body makeover with Jane Dieter, 40 year old woman, um, had a few kids. You know, 170 pounds. Has put on a little bit of baby weight and has no get it off. It's 27% body fat, so she's a little, she's not the obese, but she, she's in the upper 20s, which is a little bit over the healthy range, so she needs to start dropping some weight. She's averaging about 2,500 calories a day, doesn't really eat a breakfast, but gets hungry at lunch and dinner and eats a lot of her big meals later in the day, and she gets kind of fed up, so she decides, I'm going to go join this weight loss center, and guess what, they're going to they're going to drop her calories down about uh, 1,000 calories per day, and she drops to 160 pounds after two weeks. You know, she feels she feels sluggish, she's tired, but hey, you know what? The scale's telling her what she wants to hear. But well, let's keep going with this thing. Well eventually she's gonna hit a plateau, right? So now they're gonna cut it down to a thousand calories per day. They're gonna cut it another five hundred. Uh, her weight continues to drop. She's tired, she's sluggish, she's all it's all about the willpower now. And she's got a lot of cravings, but she's gonna keep going because the scale keeps telling her what she wants to hear. Afterwards she gets done She's 140 pounds after 10 weeks. Her body fat is down to 24%. Now, remember, it was 27% before. With this translated, and she lost 30 pounds and only 2% body fat. So the real story is she lost a lot of lean tissue and water weight, lost only 6 pounds of body fat. So the majority of her weight loss was not fat weight because she put her body in a starvation mode. And the result equals the skinny fat look, where you have somebody who loses weight, but they don't really get any more tone. They become a smaller version of themselves, and they can look, they can look kind of flabby. Um, at the end of, of a weight loss thing, when somebody let the you know let the air out of their skin or something like that, so um, we don't want to look skinny, but we want to look lean and toned. And so, what does Jane do? Like most people, she's human. She falls off, right? She gets back into some of her old bad eating habits, start to creep up on her. Maybe it was the holidays, whatever throws her off. And even though she's eating less calories now, because she has less muscle mass than before. She starts to gain the weight back, so she goes up even at a higher weight. And now look at her body fat percentage; it's five percent higher, even though she's eating less calories. That's because she's she's sabotaging metabolism by killing off that that lean muscle. And what does she do? She she goes back to the diet center because that's where she lost the weight before, right? 
and she she says I failed the diet, but really the diet failed her because the diet didn't address body composition; it just addressed weight. And she repeats this cycle over and over again. And it might be a different diet. Right? If she if she's not doing weight less than her, it's the next diet. It's the HCG, it's the Atkins, whatever it is. It's just going to keep the cycle going. And, she, and we want to break the cycle here tonight. So we're going to talk about eight simple guidelines to break the cycle. Small frequent meals throughout the day. There's two reasons we do this. Um, one is um, our metabolism is kind of like a fire. We want to throw kindling on the fire often and keep it stoked. But that also helps keep our blood sugar stable. And the one meal I look at is, is, is when we're saying five meals, we're not saying you got to sit down and have five, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner type meals. We're having our three squares, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with two snacks. And that second meal, that afternoon snack, when people skip that, a lot of times they're trying to get done with work, get home, they're not hungry. A lot of times I see when they skip that meal, their blood sugar drops, and by the time they get home, they overeat at dinner. So that helps keep the blood sugar stable. It keeps the metabolism moving. And it spreads the calories out so they're much more usable throughout the day. And that helps to, that helps keep you from overeating at, at, uh, later in the day. And number two, we go to breakfast like a king lunch, king lunch like a queen dinner, like a prince. Most of our country eats about the majority of its calories after 7 p.m. You know, we don't want to skip breakfast. Breakfast is like starting a fire. It's like starting up your grill. It fires up your metabolism. And here's, here's a good tip. One of my friends who's a dietitian said, you know, it's just look at food as like sleep. If you don't get sleep, your body's going to make up for it somewhere. You know, and you haven't slept for a while, and then all of a sudden you just crash. Same thing's going to happen here. If you're not eating enough earlier in the day, guess what? At night, you're going to start. It's going to start cranking up on you. You're going to start eating more at night, which is the worst time to eat. And you're eating most of your calories at night, but right before you close time, close to your bedtime, and that's going to promote fat gain versus fat loss. So, eat breakfast, a bigger breakfast, a little lighter lunch, a little lighter dinner. So you're paring it down throughout the day. Um, and that's going to be key to that. You know, even if you're not hungry, you want to be eating generally about every three hours. So these two are really important things. Get in the habit of doing that. It means you got to carry some snacks with you. It might be a good meal replacement bar. It might be some nuts. It might be some of these things like that that are easy to carry with you and throw them in your purse um, or keep them in your desk at work. But you want you don't want to skip those, and you don't want to go five six hours without eating because typically that's going to lead to a lower blood sugar and, and eating more calories. Step three is this is a big one we see a lot of times. People just don't eat enough protein. Protein is important for building, uh, you know, for muscle, for maintaining building muscle as well as skin and hair. But people think of it like that. But what we want to do is we want to use protein for its, its hormonal benefits is because one of the things protein does is it helps keep blood sugar stable and keeps you feeling full. And that is key when it comes to help losing body fat. We want if stable blood sugar equals your body then primed for fat loss. And if we're eating carbs, even good carbohydrates on their own without protein, we're still going to have higher than we want uh, blood sugar levels and insulin levels, which is going to keep us, um, it's going to be much easier to gain, keep fat on the body like a sponge and, and it's going to be a lot harder to lose fat. So having some protein and fairly equal to your carbohydrate, we always say gram for gram, you know, but uh, people, you know, if, even if you come up a little short, that's okay, but a lot of times I'll see people when I first look at their fitness file, they're doing like 60, 70 grams of carbohydrate with 5 grams of protein. They're way out of balance, and it's about bringing these two nutrients in balance. And when you start eating more protein, it's you know it's going to help your body, um, you know, like I said, build that muscle and maintain that muscle. But it's also going to help you feel like you're going to be able to eat eat less. I mean, think about if you ate a bag of potato chips, um, you'd eat the whole bag probably. That's a lot of carbohydrate. Um, or you know, you think about like pretzels, things like that. You can eat the whole bag. Think about meats and eggs and things like that. You probably can't eat a ton of that without that feeling full. I mean, I know like if you eat like a, a even a lean cut of steak, you can't eat like 16 ounces unless like anybody's seen like John Candy in the Great Outdoors, you know, he does that huge steak, man, but it just sits in you. But protein does help you feel full and it also is kind of cool nutrient that it actually requires more calories from your body to be burned to actually process it, much more than carbohydrate or fat. So, it is a pretty it is a pretty important nutrient. And one thing you might want to write down is general rule of thumb is we say about twenty to thirty grams at a meal and about ten to twenty grams at a snack. You know, people are like, How much protein should I be eating? With women that's typically where I want them to sit. And about an ounce of meat is about seven grams of protein generally. An egg white is about three grams, a whole egg is about six grams of protein. Um, you know, Greek yogurt and things like that, you can easily get there with twenty grams of protein. So it's not as hard to do as you Thing, but this one big, the big ones. That's why I'm spending some time on that. That I see a lot of when I look at food journals. It's just really weak on the protein. 
Um, we're not trying to turn you into like bodybuilders or football players here, but most women I, I see are real carb heavy and not enough protein. Um, number four is kind of like, well, yeah, I get it. Good fast and fried foods. The reason I put this one up there is because a lot of people salad at Chipotle or Subway or that's adequate. The problem with a lot of these fast food places, even though they have healthier choices now, there's a lot of extra hidden calories in there. There's a lot of sodium. There's a lot of chemicals in there. Now, not to say that you, you know, if you don't have any other options, this is you know, you know, once in a while type thing. But eating out and eating um, at the fast food places, even on the healthy, so-called healthy menu, is still going to hamper your progress. So you're going to have to get in the habit of preparing meals, lunches, dinners, snacks, um, and not going the easy route. If you do have to go to fast food, there's, you know, you can get a taco salad at Chipotle. You know, don't eat the big, you know, you don't need to eat the big she taco shell or the burrito. Um, you can make, you can do a taco salad. Jimmy John's has sandwiches, which you don't need all the the processed breads that they have at the places. Better than it's the better than getting the you know the foot long sub or something at Subway. But um, my point here is that a lot of these places um, now some of them are putting their calories up there, but they're not always putting to some of the amounts of chemicals and preservatives and sodiums that that are are in there too, which will help make you hold extra weight. Um, number five, white simple sugars and snacky foods. Um, you know, we always say like with carbohydrates, white is the devil. So white pasta, white noodles, popcorn, these type of things are going to spike your blood sugar. When you spike your blood sugar, your body releases insulin to, to control your blood sugar. And the more you spike, your, the higher the spike, the more insulin that's going to be released. Insulin is a storage hormone. So when you have high levels of insulin, guess what your body's really good at storing, not burning. And so we want to limit these foods, and if we do eat them, we want to eat them with protein or with, and with good fats. But I would really stay away from these things, these white sugars, white bread. Um, be careful of some of the, 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 the yogurts. I would get all your yogurt and a plain yogurt and add your own fruit in. If the, the yogurt, even though they pitch it as healthy, when they add the fake fruit in there, that's refined sugar. Uh, the caribou drinks, those type of things, um, lots of sugar in there uh, and fat. When you put sugar and fat together, that's a deadly one-two punch. That's really going to keep. That's really going to sabotage your metabolism. This is a, one of the biggest things I think we want to spend time on because when you are spiking your blood sugar, even if it's one time per day, it takes your body a while for it to get it back under control. And if your blood sugar is being spiked daily, it's it's a it's a reason why you're staying stuck. So you got to get your blood sugar down to a more stable level. That'll get your insulin to a lower level. Hormonally, that puts you in a prime environment for burning body fat. And the, you know the frustrating part with a lot of people is I was looking at the food journals. They're eating a lot of healthy things today, but they're having that one sugar thing every day, and they're not getting heavier. They're not, but they're not losing weight either. They're stuck in neutral. They're not going in forward or reverse. So you really have to start eliminating these things. And going back to I talked about pretzels earlier. So you know, let's just take carbohydrate here. Two carbohydrates. Let's say you're at a party and you got a bowl of pretzels and a bowl of apples. Which bowl do you think is getting refilled? You don't see anybody camping out at the apple bowl eating all the apples. They're eating the pretzels. They're eating the snacky foods. Think about a Super Bowl party. If you were to put a bunch of apples out, would somebody keep would somebody keep eating the whole bowl of apples? But if you put some chips out, things like that, you keep eating those type of foods. And those are the snacky foods that drive blood sugar up. So think of those foods you keep eating. They never really satisfy, and you just almost keep eating them because you crave them more and more. So you really want to avoid those foods like the plague. Stick with more whole food sources when it comes to your carbohydrates, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, like things like oatmeal, uh, you know, brown rice, wild rice. Uh, you know, sweet potatoes, those type of things. Quinoa is a really good one. Um, those are the type of things you want to be emphasizing. And when it comes to bread, uh, be real careful with bread. The, the bread I recommend is Ezekiel bread. Ezekiel bread is is a uh, it's a non-processed bread. You'll find it in the health food section of most of your stores, and you have to keep it in the fridge. And and you know why? Because it doesn't have the preservatives and additives in it, but it actually has tortillas and um, different breads you can try. They also have one called Rudy's, which is is really similar to that. But you know, think of a sprouted grain bread if you're going to use a bread. Um, and then if you are going to eat some of these, like I said, these higher carb meals, make sure you have some protein so the blood sugar doesn't go off off out of whack and and really sets you up for a big insulin spike, which is going to be hampering your efforts to lose body fat. Number six, you want to be drinking at least eight 12 ounce glasses of water per day. Really, we want to do about half your body weight in ounces. Uh, but you, this is a good place to start because most people aren't doing even eight. And you can track this in MyFitnessPal, but it helps you burn out fat because it keeps your body flushed out of toxins. Toxins hamper fat, fat loss. also helps with digestion and removing uh, things from the digestive system, which is going to help you have a flatter stomach. It also 
helps in terms of your liver and kidneys. Your liver and kidneys are important. Obviously, they're important organs, but your liver is a big fat metabolizing organ. If you get dehydrated by not drinking enough water, your kidneys will not function without the help of the liver. So if the liver has to help the kidneys continue to function, it can't focus on fat metabolism. It's almost like it's got to shut off the fat burning switch and divert the switch over to help the kidneys function. So drinking a lot of water is real important. I would recommend getting, um, you know, dealing with uh, bottled water. I like reverse osmosis. I really like distilled water. Um, and use it in some of your teas and things like that because it's going to help you flush those things out. It's going to make your skin look better. And it's probably the most inexpensive but one of the most effective nutrients there is. Um, number seven is fiber content. Um, most women are going to be, we want to be looking at 25 grams a day. The average person is about 12 to 13 grams a day. And you can get it from veggies, nuts, things like that. It's also something you could supplement in, but uh, most people fall way, 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 way short of that. And uh, that's also going to make you feel full, and it's also going to help control blood sugar, just like protein. So it works a lot like protein in that sense. It also kind of tricks your, when you're drinking, eating a lot of vegetables, it tricks your body into thinking you ate a lot of calories, and it'll actually take up your metabolism. So it's almost like a, a false positive to your metabolism to, to, to crank that up and digest a lot of this food. Even though there's not a lot of calories there, it thinks it is because a lot of high fiber foods have a lot of volume, meaning there's a lot, there's a lot of surface area, but not a lot of calories. Um, number eight, this is a big one because I see this, this is the end of, this is public enemy number two. Public enemy number one is sugar. Public enemy number two is alcohol because it acts a lot like sugar and processed carbohydrate when it hits your body. And it basically shuts down your fat burning and increases inflammation in the body. And there's, there's the calories you get from alcohol are the, are empty calories, meaning that the calories you get from food, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates all can be assigned to do something in your body. They can be used for energy, they can be used for repair, for protein, but the calories from alcohol, which is seven calories per gram, really can't do anything. They're just, you're just throwing excess empty calories into your body. Um, so if you're doing the one or two glasses of wine a night or the beer a night after work, that is really going to hamper your efforts. You really want to eliminate that. I can't tell you how many people I've seen when they eliminate alcohol content or they really cut it back to maybe once a week from every night. They, they drop a lot of body of body weight pretty quickly, and a lot of times it'll keep a lot of extra bloating on you as well. So those are your eight simple guidelines. Um, where do you get started? Uh, what I would recommend is first thing, if you haven't done this for a while, um, some of you guys have done this, but is we look at doing a cleanse. And we're not talking about some crazy Hollywood cleanse where you just drink, you eat juice and don't and starve yourself. We're talking about restore and balance your digestive tract. And, more and more, we're finding out this has a real direct effect on your approach, on your on your overall health. Um, you know, like they talk about breast cancer for women, but they talk, but you know, you see right there the statistic: every nine seconds, somebody dies from colon cancer. That's that's a big deal, and it's actually equal to breast cancer in women right now. And they're doing a lot of research at you, and they're actually starting to link gut health to things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's even. So there's a real health connection there. So we want to start there because. A lot of times people have been eating, drinking things, maybe they've been on medications that have messed up their digestive tract, which is going to make it hard to absorb the good stuff and get rid of the bad stuff. You, know, you figure you got 30 feet of hose basically down there, and if that's not moving right, a lot of times that's going to be cause problems. And even if you are eating really healthy food and you're trying to get the energy and the nutrients from it, it's going to be somewhat limited. And it actually was uh, on a, uh, a webinar, another webinar, and the guy was saying that he had talked to a doctor from Mayo, and they said there can be up to about 28 pounds of undigested food or fecal matter in your in your intestines. It's pretty gross, but that's a lot of excess bloat and weight that you could be holding that could be really weighing you down. Kind of a nasty statistic, but it shows you how important it is to just go in and make sure that digestive tract's working right. Um, you should actually be going every single day to the bathroom, and a lot of people aren't. And that's not a good thing because that's one of the ways that your body gets rid of waste and toxins. So you want to be detoxifying your body every day. And the real important about restoring this is, is basically we want to get rid of the bad stuff and absorb the good stuff. And that's that's key to, to really having a healthy functioning metabolism. It's a lot like the lint trap in your in your dryer. When your dryer quits working, what do we do? We go in and clean the lint trap out, and then uh, the, the dryer starts to work again. Liken that to your metabolism. The cleanse we recommend has fiber, some probiotics which are good bacteria and some herbals so that can help naturally get things moving along. That's that's the first step I would recommend um, is getting a, getting a cleanse. And, you know, a lot of times you'll lose weight on a cleanse, but sometimes it's, it's like it's not necessarily going to be a lot of fat weight. It's a lot of times the gunk that your body's storing in there you don't realize. Like you said, you could have up to 28 pounds, according to the doctor from the Mayo Clinic, stuck up in there. And most people are maybe not that high. But it probably depends on the size of the person, but that's a good first step to go after. 
Another thing you want to start doing is tracking your food. Now, everybody in this challenge is going to be using MyFitnessPal.com. It's really easy. It's a free app. You can put it on your phone. Very easy to use, very popular. Um, a lot of people, it syncs up with a lot of things. Um, so you got to track what you want to improve. You know, most people have no idea what they're putting in there. I can't tell you how many aha moments I've seen with people. Uh, when they start tracking their food, they don't really realize how many calories certain things they're eating or, you know, eating, the, you know, like that steak at night with 1,000 calories at 8 o'clock at night. You know, it just helps them even on their own without a coach even looking at it, start to see things that they're doing and make adjustments. And it also makes you more conscious of what you're doing. Now there's there's some feedback of what you're putting in your body. Uh, so that's another important thing. You, you have to you have to track your food. And if you don't do that, it's going to be really, really hard to be successful. And um, the nice thing is these this day and age, those, with those apps and things like that, it makes it much easier to do this and follow through with this and gives you a much more realistic numbers. Exercise. Um, you know, like we said, we want a multi-pronged multi -pronged attack. So we recommend cardio two to four times a week. You know, if you've been doing something for a while, like running and biking, time to mix it up. You know, you got to keep your body guessing. One of the things that one of my favorite gurus in the fitness industry says is make your body inefficient. So if you've been if you've been you know running because of the nice weather, you know, and you want to still run, well, just you know change your route or go do run some hills or do some sprints, do something different. That you know even if you want to continue to run, you got to do something different. If you're still doing the same four mile loop you've done for the last few months, and you wonder why your body's not losing weight. That's probably why. Um, do something you like because if your neighbor runs and you don't like to run doesn't mean you have to run. And and keep the intensity high. You know, like I said, mix intervals in there. Um, you know, try different things. Boxing's real good. You know, it depends on where you're at fitness level. Maybe power walk and uh, power walk and jog outside. Uh, you know, maybe you, you start, uh, you do some hills. Uh, maybe you do some, um, you know, some kettlebell swings or jumping jacks in between your elliptical if you have a home gym. Whatever it is, two to four times a week high intensity cardio. Strength training, two to four times a week. And we mean total body metabolic style, not bodybuilding style, where we start going, I'm going to do bicep curls on the bench. I'm going to do the thigh master machine at the club. I'm talking about total body metabolic style. And that means, like, instead of doing the butt blaster machine at the club, do kettlebell swings because it trains the hamstrings, the back of the legs, the butt, the, the core, the uh, upper and lower back. You get a lot of muscle movement. It actually makes you more athletic, too, because your body is meant to work as a unit. You're going to burn more calories during the workout. You're going to get the heart rate up there, which is going to create uh, a higher level of human growth hormone. And your human growth hormone is a fat-burning hormone that is going to be elevated in your body and help your body burn fat naturally. And it's also going to give you that afterburn effect. So being, by doing high-intensity strength and cardio 24 to 36 hours when you're done, your body's going to still be burning calories at an elevated rate, kind of like the afterburn. Um, it's just still revved up in a sense. You don't get that from doing you know, an hour at the moderate you know, walking pace on an elliptical or a treadmill, you just don't get that. Or even a jog, you know, maybe you run a nine or ten minute mile comfortably. You don't, you're not going to, you're not going to get the same effect. So you, the idea here is you want to stimulate those fat, uh, fat burning hormones, and then by controlling your nutrition, you're stifling the fat storing hormones. And then movement flexibility and stability five times a week. Now everybody in this program gets you get an FMS screen, a functional screen. This is where we we start to figure out where do you need to be working on, where do you need to focus. You might have real flexible hamstrings, and you might not even need to stretch your hamstrings. You might have issues other, in other parts of your body, and that's where we want to be focusing on and make sure that we're keeping your body well balanced, keeping your FMS score high, and that means you move well. You means your joints are working well, your posture is pretty lined up, and you're, you're pretty well balanced throughout your body, and that's going to keep that, that other fat-storing fat hormone cortisol at bay. And so we want to make sure you're feeling good as you're working out. And one of, I'll tell you what, one of the biggest killers of motivation and drive and momentum is getting injured. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen too because I've had a lot of people come in my studio that were in good shape and they got a bad injury because they didn't do this part and that just killed their momentum and then it goes in a downward, downward, downward spiral from there where they actually end up, they're, they're sitting at the home injured on the couch and that leads into eating and, and all kinds of things, maybe having a few brewskis or whatever it is. But we want to make sure we're keeping you moving well so you can train hard but then not worry about getting injured. Here's a few of our, our, our uh, people that have done really well. Um, start out with the 2040 Challenge, and I'll explain that. Is, is, you know, Julia works at our studio, started with this 2040 Challenge, um, and she, she dropped a bunch of weight. And she had come in um, and had been a member at a big club and had tried some of the, the products we used, but she wasn't coached. She didn't have a good coach. She didn't have anybody coaching her, and this is what she did. Once she got a good coach, somebody that really cared about her results, 
you know, 11% body fat, 28 inches. Uh, Tiffany Below was doing some group training with us and needed some lifestyle changes, wasn't really doing a lot of things that were healthy, you know, hanging out at the casino, a lot of, a lot of drinking beer with softball, but, um, you know, did some group training and did our 24-day challenge and was had seen great results, dropped about 30 pounds. You can see right there in the pictures some of her results. Um, Cindy was uh, a person that we worked with over at her business at first, and she dropped her pant size down, and then she also got more flexible. I mean, she couldn't even touch, get her hands below her knees, and she went to touch her toes. She could touch her toes. She got rid of a lift in her leg. Um, you can see she went from a size 18, 20 to a 14, 30 pounds, and she had a home gym in Oatana and got some good guidance. And, um, you know, this is pretty good, 4.3% in six weeks. You can see the difference in her and how much healthier she looks. And then Michelle... She was one that did get injured. She was a body teacher, injured, injured her back, got really uh, out of shape. And a year later, here she is. Um, she started out doing, uh, you know, our 2040 challenge and kept going with her eating and the habits she learned there. And this is her a year later doing a fitness show. I know that's an extreme goal, but it just shows you what's possible with a little dedication and focus. These are just some of the women that we worked with in the past. You know, I think we can talk nutrition and all these things all we want, but if we don't have some real stories to back it up, it doesn't really mean a whole lot to you guys. Um, so... What is the 2040 challenge? The 2040 challenge, it's our system, it's our kickstart system. It's not an end-all, be-all, it's not a quick fix. But what we do see with the 2040 challenge is we do see people lose about 5 to 10 pounds um, and about 5 to 10 inches in their body fat over 24 days, which is really good because it helps them get a kickstart into better healthy habits. Now, after 24 days, you don't stop. You keep going with, you know, your habits you learn in the 2040 challenge. And we do the 2040 challenge, um, we give you a special nutrition guide to, to step up from what we gave you for the beauty body makeover exercise plan a little more for you I know we're giving you stuff for this this uh, this beauty body makeover challenge and then we give you the out of care 24 day challenge products which include our cleanse kit which is which we go over with you um, you also get some special extra nutrition coaching emails and videos and uh, typically we'll sell it the value is about 254 we sell for 199 uh, Beauty Makeover, we're going to do it for 175, which is going to last through the 15th, which is the last day of the Beauty Body Makeover Challenge. I, and I say that I don't, you know, some people need to do this whole transformation thing in steps. I mean, some people need to start with exercise and feel like they're getting some momentum with that, and then they want to add in the nutrition. Some people can do both at the same time, but we want to provide a solution for you guys that helps you um, get a little, maybe a little more structure if you feel more structure. You know, you also have the option just to follow the stuff that we put out there and do the fitness pal to start off there if you're comfortable there. But if you want to take that nutrition up a notch over these next four weeks, this is what I would recommend. This is what our best clients, our best success stories have used to get started. And like I said, this isn't a 24 days and then we're going to get you, you know, 40 pounds off. It's really just to get you some momentum in this department and some extra coaching on top of what you might already be getting with the Beauty Body Makeover. So with that being said, um, I'm just going to maybe turn it over if anybody's got any questions. Otherwise, that's what this is being recorded, and if you want to watch it again, um, you can sure do that. I'll post it on the Facebook page, and I'll put it in an email as well. Um, other than that, I'm just going to hang out here, and I think we, if we have any questions, um, you can either type in the chat box. You can ask it right now. All right. Well, I must have done such an awesome job. Nobody has any questions. Well, feel free um, after this. I know it's a lot of information, but feel free to watch this again. We'll get this up on a YouTube video, and um, we'll be doing more nutrition stuff as we go along through this. Next week, we're, we're planning to do a grocery tour, which is a great hands-on way to go out and look at some food labels. But I thank everybody for being here tonight. Hopefully, this was a, a good use of your time, and we look forward to helping you have a lot of success in this um, Beauty Body Makeover Challenge, and if you do want to do the 2040 Challenge, you want more information, please just reach out to me, and we get you set up with one of our trainers. Um, if, I'm sure if you have more questions, we definitely will answer them for you. But other than that, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Everybody have a great night, and uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing some of you at the Wednesday night uh, group workout for the Beauty Body Makeover. Thanks a lot, and have a great night. Thank you. Uh